stock trading PCs. What matters, what doesn't? Let's find out. What's up guys? Welcome back to a, another Geek Geek video. Sorry for not uploading for a while. I got super busy with my robotics club, but I had a lot of fun. Anyways, I've been getting a lot of questions recently regarding stock trading PC parts and how to configure them. In this video, I'll be talking about my recommendations for stock trading PCs and what I recommend my clients to spend money on and what to hold back their money on. Now, let's begin. All right, let's just start with the CPU. There are two most important aspects when buying a CPU, core count and thread speed. Starting off with CPU cores. Cores on a CPU are basically single CPU processors. Adding more cores allows your computer to do more tasks at once rather than a lot of programs being queued up on one single core. This allows for faster processing. If your stock trading application benefits from having multiple cores or is multi-threaded, get a CPU that ever has around eight to 12 cores. But keep in mind, performance does not always scale linearly with adding more cores. So buying a 12 core CPU for a certain stock trading application might not be the best thing to do. Here's a list of single and multi-threaded stock trading applications. Since most stock trading applications are written on older code, this won't be much of an issue. A lot of them are single threaded and only benefit from having one single, one fast core. So six cores is around the sweet spot. Now moving on to thread speed. This is probably the most important metric for your trading system. Thread speed is the amount of work a CPU can do on one single thread or on one stream of instructions. It's determined mainly by clock speed and IPC. Clock speed is essentially how fast physically your CPU is running. It is de it's determined by a metric called Hertz. Uh, one Hertz is basically one cycle per second. CPUs nowadays are really advanced and are now go to gigahertz, which is one billion cycles per second. But that's not the only metric to look at. Let's look at IPC now. IPC is basically the amount of instructions a CPU can do per cycle or clock. If a CPU can do more instructions per clock than another CPU, it'll be faster. For example, if two CPUs, assuming everything else is the same, runs at 3.6 gigahertz, but one has a 20% IPC increase over the other, other it'll be roughly 20% faster. In all, if your stock trading application utilizes multiple cores or is multi-threaded, then invest in a CPU with around eight to 12 cores. If not, stick to lower core counts, but make sure to prioritize on single thread speed. All right, now for RAM. RAM is one of those parts where a lot of stock traders will either go overboard or go underboard. <laughs> or under spec. But anyways, RAM essentially in a stock trading computer stores everything that your CPU, CPU will process. This can be stock charts, text, Google Chrome tab, numbers, incoming feeds, and all other sorts of stuff. But there are two most important metrics to look at when buying RAM are capacity and speed. From my experience, most stock trading applications won't utilize over 16 gigabytes. Some of them can get close, maybe tiny bit over, but depending on the other apps going on in your system, I would recommend around a minimum of 16 and a recommended amount for 32, considering other applications going on, like Google Chrome having um, news feeds come, up, come in. It can take up a lot of resources on your RAM. Speed usually isn't much of an issue, issue for um, RAM. But since the pricing is really close nowadays, I usually get the fast kit around 3200 to 3600 megahertz for my clients. And now onto storage solutions. SSDs are hard drives. There's no need to go for a super high end SSD or hard drive, but my recommendation is to go with the, a solid SSD that will provide fast load times. Let's say an issue occurs while trading and you have to restart your computer. You wanna get back onto your, your trading software as fast as possible. So the SSD will provide fast load times. My recommendation is to go with around 2400 to 3500 megabits per second. This will allow for Windows to load up really fast as well as your stock trading application. For capacity, setups that include Thinkorswim, Google, chat, services, live alerts, I usually recommend 256 to 500 gigabytes for my clients. Now for the GPU, why do I recommend this tiny little card over this massive card? Let's find out. Most traders end up spending way too much on their GPU. They'll spend like $700 on a graphics card that won't even help on performance. I recommend Quadro cards over gaming graphics cards. Here's why. There are three reasons why I choose a Quadro card over a gaming or a graphics card. They are stability, 2D graphics, and output. 
As for stability, gaming graphics cards are meant to squeeze as much performance as possible. That can lead to instability issues like games crashing and that's what you least want in a stock shooting computer. Quadro cards are built from Nvidia and they're designed to be super stable in all applications. Second reason, 2D graphics. Gaming graphics cards are designed for heavy 3D workloads, such as games that have to render a lot of complex 3D polygons and shapes. On the other hand, Quadro cards are designed to handle 2D graphics, such as 2D CAD, charts, lines, uh, simple 2D shapes. Trading softwares utilize 2D graphics, such as shapes, lines, vectors, and charts, which is what Quadro cards are great at. Now let's take a look at some of the benchmarks. From the benchmarks shown, the main metric, simple vectors, the P620 outperformed the 2060 Super by over 20%. Stock trading applications heavily utilize lines and simple vectors for their charts and graphs. As you can see, however, the 2060 Super completely destroyed the P620 in terms of 3D performance because that's what gaming graphics are, are designed for. Stock trading applications don't utilize any 3D graphics, so P620 is my recommendation. Reason number three, display outputs. Many modern graphics cards support four to five monitors, which is pretty normal, but the P620 achieves this. It has four mini display ports at a much lower price and at a smaller form factor. This allows you to have two or maybe even three of these on one PC, which can allow four, eight, or maybe even 12 monitors on one setup. To top it off, the P620 is half the price of the 2060 Super. I mean, can't get better than that. Now for motherboard choice. Motherboards are pretty easy to choose. Just make sure you have a good power delivery and make sure you have the right amount of PCIe slots for your graphics cards. For power delivery, I usually recommend just a stable power delivery system from a reliable brand for my clients. Motherboards can get, can get pretty complicated. If you wanna learn more, just leave a comment down below asking for the video. Normally my clients don't really care about what motherboard they have, they just let me sort that out. There are two types of PCIe slots that graphics cards can, can fit into, X8 and X16. X16 provides the most bandwidth for a graphics card so if you're gonna add multiple graphics cards like two or more make sure your motherboard has the right amount of x16 slots for your graphics card now for power supplies depending on the waters of the system i usually calculate it using an online calculator like pc part picker or a separate website i'll take that wattage add around 100 200 watts to make sure the pc is fine for future upgrades and as for efficiency anything above 80 plus bronze is usually fine for my clients all right guys um i hope you find that video helpful uh, if you have any questions just leave a comment down below i'll be happy to answer them uh, anyways make sure to like comment share this video to all your stock trading friends subscribe and that's all thank you for watching see you next time